Hey there, Stormtroopers. Brian Cook. You've been asking for more and more Twiddlestorm content, even though I just uploaded a video last week. So I'm here to give you something a little bit different today. This is Landless Twiddlestorm. I know that I uploaded that video, but everyone keeps on saying, give me more. We want to see it post Modern Horizons. That deck list isn't getting any upgrades. Just let's be upfront. The only thing that I am even considering is a sideboard dress down. Uh, so instead, I'm going to play a deck list today with Modern Horizons 2 updates. This deck list comes from the Twiddlestorm Discord. Not my Discord, not my deck list. It's their idea. I'm just playing it here today to showcase it a little bit. So the idea behind this deck is that there's no lands, but Twiddlestorm uh, usually needs some lands because of the card Lotus Field requires you to sack a couple. Well, how do we get around that? We're playing multi-phase cards, and those would be Selendi Vision, Bailgad Recovery, Seagate Restoration, and Turn Timber Seosis. Symbiosis, my bad. Uh, talking is difficult. So we have 16 uh, flip cards. And then we have our four copies of Lotus Field. Why would we do this? Well, the reason is the Modern Horizons card, Abundant Harvest. So you choose land or non-land, and then you reveal cards to the top of your deck until you hit what you want. So if you don't have a Lotus Field yet, you can play it naming land and guarantee yourself a Lotus Field. So one green, guarantee, go get Lotus Field. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, and then you have Sylvan Scrying. So this deck list has a very high success rate at finding Lotus Field. How good is that? I don't know. That's what we're going to find out today. I really, truly do not know. Oh, whoops. I forgot to remove the Solendi Vision from the, or the Slight of Hands from the deck list. I'm sorry. Those are gone. This is the deck list. Sorry. Uh, this deck list is not playing Slight of Hand in order to make room for the Abundant Harvest. I knew something looked a little bit off. 64 cards, get out of here. So we are playing Abundant Harvest in that slot. The downside, in my opinion, is on the combo turn. Uh, this is a dangerous card because let's say you already have your Lotus Field. You now have eight cards in your deck being Abundant Harvest and Sylvan Scrying that are not ideal draws. Uh, this is essentially a land that could have been a Wishclaw Talisman. And this is less reliable than Sleight of Hand because if you name non-land, you could hit your ten, turn timber symbiosis and, uh, you know, not ideal. You could also hit a twiddle effect when you need an action spell. This card is a true green gamble. Um, a little bit nervous about that, but we'll see how it plays. Um... You know, there's no Underworld Breach here. With no Fetchlands, Breach is less reliable. That said, there's a hidden bonus to playing these, land, or these lands, and that's Past in Flames. You can actually cast these from the graveyard after you've sacrificed them to Lotus Field. But on the front half, you can also cast them. Mid-combo, you can cast Lundy Vision if you need to. Let's say you have a bunch of Twiddles. You can Slendy Vision for your next Ideas and Mountain. There's a lot of ways that you can play this deck list, including hard casting Seagate Restoration. This is another engine within the deck. I know seven mana is really, really expensive, but it's possible. Uh, you can hard cast this and draw. It's something I'd like to do in this video. That said, hard casting turn timber symbiosis, uh, not a good idea. I got really excited initially at the idea of putting our cyborg card AV Progenitor Ooze into play. And then it was pointed out to me that I wouldn't get the Storm Trigger, which makes that a little bit embarrassing. So don't be looking to hard cast your turn timbers. It's not going to work how you want it to. Um, yeah, so if you're familiar with my modern videos for uh, Twiddle Storm, you know a lot of how this the core of the deck works. For But those of you that don't know, we're looking to mainly abuse the arcane ability uh, on Ideas Inbound, Reach Through Mist, and Peer Through Depths with Psychic Puppetry to untap our Lotus Field and just keep on making mana over and over while we're casting our arcane spells. Uh, Twiddle and Dream Script are just blue dark rituals in this deck with our Lotus Field, which is kind of cool. It's a nice throwback to the Desire decks uh, and Standard back during Mirrodin and uh, Scourge Block. So sort of cool when they were untapping their Gilded Lotus and now Gilded Lotus is just a land. Crazy how Power Creep works. Um... So that's what I have to say about the main deck. In the board, we lost our uh, Fatal Pushes, we lost our Aria Flames, we lost our Ad Nauseam. So what's the plan? Uh, well, one, we sort of lose our 
package with Wishclaw Talisman for our, our one ups to get us out of sticky situations. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, that said, we still have a few interaction spells between Spell Pierce and Veil of Summer. You get to play Veil of Summer in this deck list against all those counter spell decks and discard, sp uh, discard spell decks. Uh, because we play green, which is a huge pickup for this deck. I love Veil of Summer. If you follow me in Legacy, you know I main deck four of it in the Epic Storm. Um, so those are our control cards, as well as if you want to, you can board a navy, progenitor ooze. This is how we're looking to dodge graveyard hate, in my opinion. We're just going to ooze them out. Uh, this covers the aria slot, where we twiddle our lotus field to make green, 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 and then you play your ooze. Um, my concern is dying after doing it, because modern is such a fast format, but we'll see how it goes. Um... Yeah, I'm hoping AV is good in this deck list. It seems like it should be good. I want to cast it. I love casting it. It's super fun. Nature's Claim is sort of wishful thinking in my opinion, but I needed an extra slot for the board and it just worked. Uh, it's a one mana out, so that way we're just not Stone Cold Dead to Chalice on two. And then we have our Echoing Truth uh, for a variety of things. And then Dismember is a one of for um, Sanctum Prelate. I could get rid of this and play two dismembers, so that way it's a little bit more reliable. I just don't know how often we're going to run into a prelate. Let's do it. Why not? We'll do two dismember. I'm allowed to change my deck list. I already had 64 cards in the main deck. So this is going to be a little bit more reliable. Like, a one of Nature's Claim is not going to be something that... Like, they have to have Chalice on two and they chose not to play it on one, and you had to draw your singleton, the odds that those things line up are just not... It's not going to happen. So we're going to try this instead. Uh, and then whether the storm is for is it blitz and burn, we're green, it just makes sense. So I'm excited to play this today. Hopefully you enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it, make sure to subscribe, uh, support us, combo cabal, all that good stuff. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're already subscribed, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Did you like this? Did you not like this? Etc. Always, you know, willing to hear, listen to your comments. And I always try to respond. I have a pretty good response rate. And if you want to support this content, theepicstorm.com slash shop. You can also go to theepicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's it. That's my spiel. I just want to play this deck. I think it's going to be really sweet. And I'll, I look forward to seeing you in round number one. Don't go anywhere. Round number one, let's get it. We're on the play, looking to crush with Landless Twiddlestorm, featuring Abundant Harvest. All right, so we have our green sources, a hand of blue cards. This is, like, honestly sort of tempting because of how insane the rest of this hand is. If one of these was a blue land, I probably would have kept this, but I think we're supposed to ship it. Against better judgment, I think I'm going to keep this. It's just sort of, like, triple twiddle's not ideal. Uh, if we ever get to the point where these twiddles are live, we're going to go bananas. But the problem is getting to that point. Alright, so we're going to play Seagate Restoration. Or, I, I don't, Seagate Reborn, I guess, is the back half. I don't know these things. And we're going to cast Serum Visions. We found our field. Uh, I don't think we can pass that up, but we do need to get rid of the Abundant Harvest. That's going to make those eight green cards fairly dead the rest of the game, uh, at least in my opinion. We're also looking to find another land off the Serum Visions. We're going to have to get a little bit lucky here. We're looking to draw land off the draw, not the scry. But we'd probably take one off the scry, too. <sighs> Got to bottom these. Okay, and now we're going to pass. So the opponent's likely playing some sort of... Uh, forget what it's called hardened scales deck yeah this is definitely hardened scales we took a turn off um, it could end up biting us in the butt but i hope it doesn't really looking for land number two on our turn what is this ancient stirrings okay and the reveal is ink moth nexus hey we found our land love to see that I'm going to put this in a play tapped. Okay, so we're going to pass the turn here. I'm going to reach through Mist on their end step. 
And next turn we can theoretically start going for it. Sure, I'm just going to cast this. Okay, so we've picked up our Arcane spell, which is pretty good for the flashback on this, because now I can untap with Reach Through Mists. We're going to be going for it on our turn. We're going to float blue-green and see what we can do. Landless Twiddle. Let's go. Okay, so the triggered ability from Lotus Fields on the stack. We're going to sack these two spell lands. We can even uh, flash this back, hypothetically. I don't know if we're going to get to that point, but we could. Or we can just cast the one from our hand. But flashing it back is technically better. All right, so we've played three twiddles right there. Now we're going to cast Past in Flames. Probably don't need any red floating right now. And we'll start off by flashing back the Reach and Splicing. We want to build cards in hand for this. Uh, I guess we'll, we want to cast the Seagate in the graveyard, so maybe not that. All right, so let's twiddle a bunch. First twiddle, second twiddle, and third twiddle. We have a bunch of mana, so we do have to figure out how much mana we're willing to spend before we cast this. Let's, wow, we have five of these effects in the bottom. All right, let's cast another one, trying to build up our hand. Don't really need either of these effects. Now we can cast the Seagate from the Graveyard. This is super cool. Pretty excited about this. And I have a Twiddle in hand, so we don't have to worry about drawing one. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. I didn't think I was going to get to do it this league. Like I knew it was a possibility. I just didn't think it would happen. And here we are in our first game doing the wild and crazy stuff. All right, and I think we're actually going to get to do it twice this turn. Um, I think I want to burn one more. So this way I'll have two mana floating. Look at that. This is super sweet. I'm having a blast. Like, I was a little bit nervous about not having the... Um, what is it called? Ad nauseum in the board. But... Wow, these Seagate restorations are pretty impressive. I really enjoyed that. That was sweet. So we've taken game number one over uh, Hardened Scales. Probably want to board in the Echoing Truths. You might be thinking, like, Bryant, you're a green deck. Why aren't you playing Wilt? I wanted a card that was a little more versatile. So instead we're playing Echoing Truth and then obviously our main deck, Perilous Voyage. What are we boarding out? I imagine that it's pretty hard to board with this deck. Um, because you can't really board out spell lands. And I used to board out uh, Sleight of Hand all the time, but I think you need it in this specific list to pretty much guarantee that you always find Lotus. But maybe I can board out like two Sylvan Scrying, because I think that those are the lesser effects in this build. Let's try this out. Like, Sylvan Scrying's fine, but I think you'd rather not be casting it if you don't have to. Alright, we have one land and then Scrying. Oh, jeez. It is a green land. I think I'm going to try it. It is a Path to Lotus. We're looking to draw, ideally, a land on turn one, because this is an untapped land, which means we can cast this on three. Because we have some lands that, are, that must come into play tapped, and this is a choice, so we're looking right now, ideally, to draw a tap land or an tap land. We didn't hit. All right, so I'm going to play this out and then pass the turn. Really need to hit. I might be regretting this keep. And it looks like Arcbound Mouser is a pretty uh, strict upgrade to, uh, what was it called? Uh, I can picture the art in my head. Oh, I can't think of it. It's from Dark Steel. It's like a little robot guy going like this. What was it called? I should just look it up. Dark Steel uh, modular creature. What are you called, little artifact guy? What are you called? There it is. 
arc-bound worker. I mean, like this was a pretty good description. Daryl Reach also did uh, Desperate Rituals art, for what it's worth. Fun fact for you. All right, our time to draw land. We drew the land. Skillfully untapped land and a blue one. Best case scenario, let's go get our Lotus. Skill game, always had it. Risk versus reward. And now our opponent needs to kill us or else we're going to have another turn three. A little hairy, though. Uh, the fact that this lane didn't cast any of our cantrips was an issue. Tormod's Crypt? I didn't even... I guess I did use my graveyard in the first game. But I can always twiddle that crypt. Um, and then flashback if need be. And they're playing the Arcbound Worker, so they're just playing a ton of these effects. Okay, so they're sacrificing the Worker to pump. Well, your life total doesn't matter. I guess it does a little bit. That's not fair. It does matter a tiny, tiny bit. But I have a feeling by the time I can win, uh, the difference between 18 and 21 is not going to, you know, really be an issue. Time to go. All right. So that was a dead draw. Sacrifice the two lands. Start off on Twiddle. Okay. So we do have a reach through miss, which means that I'm going to start off on visions because I can then use Lotus to untap this. Do I want the past in flames? I think the answer is no. We drew another visions, which was not ideal. Now we're going to untap our Lotus here, Slendy Vision. It's okay. It does help us dig for more copies of Ideas Unbound, which is something that a basic land would not do. And Ideas Unbound now. We drew another Past in Flames, which is sort of interesting. I wonder if now is when I'm supposed to, like, twiddle the Crypt. Just make them use it. I don't know if this is a bad idea or not. Ooh, they're going to let us tap it. Okay. So this is going to give us five mana. And I think because they allowed the crypt to tap, we're just going to win. And our opponent's just conceding. Wow, that was pretty fast. Uh, so back-to-back -back turn threes with landless twiddle. What a way to start a league. Blue-green, unstoppable, 100% match win rate. Why would you leave this video? That would be ridiculous. Make sure you stick around. Maybe I'll hardcast some more Seagate restorations. Round number two, we're on the play once again, battling against Killer SUV. Uh, yeah, we have Lotus and Lands. This is a keep. Our opponent will have no idea what's happening. Or maybe they will. I mean, they play a lot of Magic Online. All right. So we're looking to cast uh, Serve Missions on turn one off of the back of Seagate Restoration. And then on turn two, we might play Balagad. It's really going to depend on whatever we draw off of the Visions. Our opponent's considering a mulligan here, I believe. Still waiting on Killer SUV. Okay, and the game has finally started. Let's do it. Let's go get this win. Yes, I would like to pay three life. Of course, the best shock land in the world. Serum Visions. Let's go. Alright, we definitely don't want that. And I don't even honestly think we want Salendi Visions. Passing Flames is an okay pickup, though. Um, I might just be looking to burn this Reach and Hardened Scales again. Is this the most popular deck in the format, or what? Lots of long pauses from our opponent. They might be double queuing. I'm not sure. I guess we'll get to see how well uh, the editing software is uh, working with this one. Okay, now it's our turn. I love the Dreamscript pickup. I think we're going to cast Reach here, see what we can draw into. 
another field, unfortunately. Um, is Balagad better than a Seagate Restoration? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to play this out. And now we can pass the turn. Alright, so Hardened Scales. Maybe another Ravenger. A Ballista, sure. So, in theory, this is threatening to kill us. Abundant Harvest. I think before I make any further decisions on this turn, I'm going to chaos this and name uh, non-land. See what we draw into. That was literally perfect. Uh, do I still want to go for it this turn? That is the question. What should I do? Alright, so what we can do is we can play Dream Script and then untap and then Ideas and Bound. And then we'd have to hit another twiddle to cast past in flames. Is that worth it? Or I can just pass, and then next turn I can guarantee go off with past in flames. Do we think our opponent can do 17 points of damage next turn? Um, which is really, can they do 8? I guess that would have to be an attack for 9? Um, I don't know. What's the worst that happens if I cast this idea is... I think it's actually pretty low. Because I have this Lotus Field that I wouldn't mind discarding anyway. So I think we're supposed to go for it. Pretty low opportunity cost. And we did hit the Twiddle. So we can do this now. And then we can burn another one to help make some mana. Yes, I would like to untap. Um, I don't think I'm going to burn the Abundant Harvest. I'd rather save the mana. And now we can twiddle a few times. Untap. Let's tap this again. I really like the idea of flashing back the Seagate Restoration. So far, that's my favorite thing about this list. Alright, and now let's Ideas Unbound. Again... Okay, so that wasn't that great. Uh, we still have three floating, so we have six mana. We ha we can go up to seven with uh, the puppetry that's in the graveyard. But we need at least eight mana to hardcast Seagate, because you have to find another Twiddle. Um, but we can splice this Reach Through Mist to make one mana. That's something we can do. That was a good pickup. And now... We'll do this again. Oh, well, that's good. Um, so you can burn another Psychic Puppetry here. Yes, I would like to untap. Now we go up to 9 mana. And we can cast Seagate. And this is going to draw a bunch of cards. Woot woot. That's pretty sweet. Alright, so Storm's 15 at the moment. I feel like I finally hit my payoff and I already had Lethal Storm this game. Um, yeah, let's grab the Ideas Unbound. Uh, another Twiddle. Let's cast another Ideas Unbound. Why not? We have to ramp up Storm. We might as well draw more cards. I think that's how this works. Storm's 18. Storm 19. You know me, I love casting ideas. Storm 20 can be an ideas. Why not? This deck's sweet. Okay, and now we'll end up with a grape shot. Woo woo. So far, only turn three kills. That'd be a pretty good name for video if uh, the entire league it was always turn threes. Alright, so I don't imagine Killer SUV has anything meaningful here, and we're going to be going to the sideboard. Okay, so once again, I think we want these Trudes. I could warn Spell Pierce for something like Damping Sphere. Um, I just don't know how relevant that will actually be. I think I'd rather have the Scryings in the deck. I have to imagine that Hardened Scales plays Sphere in the board. I just... I don't think I'm going to board and spell Pierce. 
Because in order for Pierce to matter, you have to open on Seagate Restoration. And then they have to play turn two uh, Sphere while you have Spell Pierce. It's just not very probable in my opinion. So instead I'm just going to keep the most consistent deck possible and just look to do my thing. Okay, game number two. We've opened up three lands, visions. I think I'm going to begrudgingly keep this. I don't think that this hand is that good. But we'll see how it goes. Urza Saga. The reason to play Hardened Scales. It's a pretty good one. This card's great. Um, I think it's best to lead off on the cantrip here. Visions. Well, we don't need these, so those can go on the bottom. But Finding Lotus is great. Triple Lotus, that's not super probable. Alright, so now they're going to have the ability to um, create the Construct token this turn. But they'll need another uh, mana source that isn't a land to do it, which is usually not very probable on turn 2 in Modern. So they're going to give up the Construct here to play Ravager. Abundant Harvest, not really a card we need. But I think it's probably worth casting this just to see if we can get ahead. Ideally, this finds like a twiddle effect. I think we're just going to be too slow this game. I have a feeling that we're going to be dying to an Ink Moth with plenty of counters on it. Non-land. Another harvest. Okay. So we're going to pass it on their end step or at some point on their turn we'll cast Reach Their Mists. All right, so now it's Killer SUV's turn, and the third chapter from Urza Saga is happening. Um, so they're probably going to activate Ink Moth here and then put an artifact into play. Pretty cool ability. So this is the turn that we could theoretically die. All right, what are they thinking about here? Are they getting an Arcbound Worker to sacrifice two Ravenger? They already have the Ozolith in play, which is a one-man artifact that they would like to get. Graftiger's Cage. That's a pretty good one. Especially when we're sitting with Passing the Flames in hand. They still have the one colorless floating to activate the Ink Moth. What will Stirrings reveal? Walking Ballista. That's a pretty good one. That's a hanger. Uh, I'm just going to reach. I'm lazy. Slendy Vision. Mm. So some of these cards are just like cards you don't really want, but they would be lands otherwise. So uh, it, it doesn't matter because like a land or Slendy Vision, technically Slendy Vision has slightly more value. And now our opponent is uh, going to do something here, I imagine. Most likely just attack. I uh, regret to inform you that in game four of uh, this league, we will not have a turn three kill. Uh, it's just super improbable for us to win from this point. Even if I were to draw Twiddle here, like, with a Twiddle draw, I still wouldn't go for it. Okay. Well, we drew the Twiddle. Um, so, hypothetically, it's free to start on a button harvest. Do another harvest. Which is what happened last time, too, I believe. I think our opponent should be able to kill us next turn, if uh, I'm correct. So, they activate a counter here, two. Sec, that's two counters, three counters, four counters, five counters, six counters, seven. They're actually not that far off from killing us, but I think I'm supposed to just pass here. Not likely to win, so why bother? I think how we beat this Grafter's Cage is most likely the Seagate Restoration. Alright, so that's another. That's 8 poison that our opponent can theoretically do right here. I don't know if they have anything else. But that would also require them sacking their board. Um, yep, so that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I don't think that this is lethal unless I'm not understanding something correctly. So they put two there. Maybe I'm wrong. 
Maybe this creates extra counters? No. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I guess I just don't understand how this thing actually works. So it, it must stack modular counters. Is that that's how it works, I guess? Um, I didn't realize that it... I thought the counters that would have gone from modular went to the ozolith. I didn't realize that it got both. So that's pretty good. Um, hard to argue with that. Hmm... I still have three bounce spells. I don't really think I want to board in anything. I do think I'm just going to hit submit once again. All right, we get to be on the play for game number three. So we need a second land, and it needs to be green. No cantrips. We're going to ship it. Uh, this hand's fine. We can bottom a twiddle here. Okay, so we're going to start the game on vision because it's a land that comes into play tapped. I'm like the Seagate Reborn. And just pass the turn. What's nice about Perilous Voyage is that we can also bounce something on turn two and try to win on turn three, hypothetically. All right. Yeah, this is another um, Hardened Scales effect. I want to keep my Perilous Voyage up. I think I want to bounce something. Pretty sure I do. Okay. So we're going to take the hit here. Interesting that they didn't play anything pre-combat. What do you have? Cage, okay. This thing's legendary. Unless I'm misunderstanding something. Um... It has modular, that's why. Uh, it's going to legend roll itself and create a 2-2. Do I want a Perilous Voyage now, or do I want to wait? Seems pretty free for me to wait a turn. Ah, full of regrets. If I knew that was the top card, I definitely would have uh, Perilous Voyage trying to win. I mean, I still could. Um, I think I'm just going to pass. You're wondering, like, why I didn't play Lotus there? Because I want to voyage. And if I play Lotus, I have to voyage in my main phase. Um, or I have to voyage next turn off the Lotus field. And it's just better to twiddle into it next turn, at least in my opinion. All right, so this thing's getting big. The legend rule doing work. They still have three cards. Okay, so now we get to play this voyage for the scry value. And this is perfect. Didn't even need the scry. Had it in me the whole time. All right, so we're going to twiddle here. And we do get a free redraw off this that makes some mana. But it's better to visions first, so that way we can draw into our scries. Wow. We're going places. All right. We're going to play this and then uh, displace puppetry. Sorry, I lost my words there for a second. They're very, very, very difficult. Okay, and now ideas inbound. I think casting Selendi Vision would honestly be a mistake. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to keep on splicing. Hit OK. The nice thing about this deck is you'll always hit with Peer. It's literally impossible not to. Our opponent's had enough. So we're 2-0, uh, two matches in a row over Hardened Scales. Maybe this is the best deck in the format. I don't know. But if this is the matchup, I hope it is. Uh, I'll see you in round number three. I believe we are not facing hardened scales. Our opponent has revealed a Lurus of the Dream Den, which typically isn't in that deck. Uh, we've opened up a, an okay hand. We're going to try this one out. It's interesting. So this hand, it shows a little bit of the weakness of playing uh, this landless version because we're likely facing burn here. 
Uh, well, Goblin Guide's not likely going to hit in this deck. Um, but we have a build that we have tap lands that are going to slow us down because uh, before we drew the Seagate Restoration, we were not going to be casting Sylvan Scrying on Curve, which is sort of an issue. Um, now we can, but we have to draw into Twiddle Effects and then Psychic Puppetry while our opponent needs to not have Idle onto the Great Rebel. And we're giving our opponent a free Lightning Bolt with the Seagate Restoration. Past in Flames, okay. They're going to bolt us. We're going to 8 right now, too. Yikes. Alright, so we need to draw a Twiddle Effect to even stand a chance. We need to draw a Twiddle and our opponent needs to not kill us. So we need them to have like three lands in hand. Opponent taking a draw here. Hopefully. Quick game. Alright, so that's five. A lightning bolt will do it. Reach through miss. So we are dead even if our opponent has nothing. All right, and they had the skewer anyway. Okay, so this is a game that we or a matchup that we now get to board in the weather of the storms and then the echoing truths. Um, I don't know if we want Evie here. Probably not, if I had to guess. I think that we just try to beat uh, Graveyard Hate via Seagate if possible. But I do think we have to board out the scryings. I just don't know how it's, you're supposed to have everything in the deck. Like, it doesn't seem realistic. We need all of our Twiddles to stay fast. So I think maybe we board out, like, one Abundant Harvest. It makes finding your Lotus pretty difficult, though. Um, maybe we board down to one Past in Flames. Let's try this out. Helps us beat Graveyard Hate a little bit better as well. No drawing double Past in Flames versus a Rest in Peace, for example. Alright, so we have two lands. If this hand ever drew Lotus, it would go Bananas. Um, is that a risk I'm willing to take here? I can just cast Ideas on turn two. I don't know. Let's do it. Why not? Why not? Okay, so we've played our land and pass. My fear is that, like, with this deck list, you just mulligan, uh, and then you lose because, like, you just go too far. But in Harvest, so now you just need a green source to find our Lotus. So we're going to go to 15. I, I was afraid I misclicked there. No green source. Um, discard these weathers and then the third puppetry. Should I be keeping a weather? Could discard like the pier. Yeah. I have a feeling I may end up needing to weather the storm. Well, the second truth could be a, um, a double time walk. Should I risk playing the visions? I think I'm going to. Oh. Brutal. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll reveal Lotus Field. Who knows? Come on, third Goblin Guide. Seagate Restoration. So I think I'm likely just uh, playing Restoration, passing with Echoing Truth up. So we're going to four now. Come on, Lotus Field. A little bit of a dicey hand. Field. Slendy Vision. Bounce these. Are they going to burn their own goblin guy to deal two? Is that their plan here? I don't think that's the play. 
Apparently it was. Um, I don't agree with that, but that was their line. So I think we have to here cast ideas into Lotus plus Twiddle to even stand a chance. Did not happen. Um, I mean, I knew the risk when I kept my seven. We also never found a green source, by the way. Like, we were sitting on this Abundant Harvest, which would have found it if we had just ever drawn into a green source. So this was definitely a game in which we lost because we played um, this build instead of the other one. Um, and that happens sometimes. Like, the mana's not as good. But we also had some sweet wins with uh, Seagate Restoration, so it's a give and take. Two ones not bad. Let's just see if we can get the rest. Round number four, we're on the draw. And we've opened up a hand where if we... We have a few draws, maybe. It's unfortunate this uh, Sunny Vision is a tap land, but I do think that this is probably a keep. I don't know. Maybe this hand is just too slow on the draw, but I'm going to try it. Ugh, did not want to see her in Mesa. I think I missed the Gigantha reveal. Hoping that this is actually Niv to Light and not Burn. Because you could just be burned without Eidolon. Uh, that is another way of running Gigantha. Okay, it looks like it's Niv to Light. Or maybe Niv to Light, I don't know. Alright, so... If we can find a green source with this uh, Serum Visions, the Abundant Harvest guarantees Lotus. Which is kind of nice for a single green. Not sure what the opponent's playing still. Uh, the pseudo noble hierarch, ignoble hierarch, is attacking. And okay, we didn't find a land there. Maybe off visions. Not off visions. So we're gonna have to discard. Uh, we do have two copies of psychic puppetry. We do not need two. So we're gonna discard one of these. Is this the lightning helix? Yep. Okay. Still need to find Lotus plus a green source. Opponent's attacking once again with the Hierarch. So we have Reach Through Mist as another draw next turn, but our opponent's not doing a whole lot, which might give us a little bit of extra time. And there's our green source. Okay. So they have to deal us 12 by next turn. Land. Give me that Lotus. Boom. And you could cast the Reach on this turn, or you can wait and do it next turn. By waiting for next turn, it actually makes some mana. So it'd be a little bit foolish to do it now. Another Lightning Helix. Okay, so we're going to 9. With the attack from Hierarch, we go to 8. And then they would have to deal 8 damage. So I don't know if this is just some sort of mid-range deck or if it's actually something else. Um, okay. We could just be dead here. It's five. So Bolt doesn't kill us. I wasn't expecting that. So it's Domain Zoo. That's the deck they're playing. Another Lotus Field, okay. Sacrifice her two lands, play Twiddle, untap. Okay, let's start off on ideas. Move our puppetry over here, just so it's a little easier to always touch that. Um, I don't know what spell I should cast here. Probably the Peer, Splice. I think I'm actually going to keep the green floating for this Abundant Harvest. Stream Visions, Reach, Twiddle. Um, hmm. The extra Twiddle's interesting over Reach, but I think I'd rather take the Reach. So the reason to take the Twiddle would be that you can cast this Lundy Vision uh, more easily. Okay, we're just going to cast the next two reaches, uh, create mana, that sort of thing, and storm. Okay, ideas was a great draw. Let's move this back over here. Um, let's keep it going. 
Seagate's a good pickup. Cast another Reach, just make some mana. There's no reason not to. So that brings us up to seven mana. So I can resolve one of these Seagate Restorations right now. And that's nine, so I'd have two mana floating. I think that's probably good enough. I can always burn the Psychic Puppetry if need be. But it doesn't look like that's the case. And our opponent's going to concede. All right. See, Restoration's uh, a secret weapon in this list by the looks of it. All right. Domain Zoo. I don't know if we really want to bring in Dismember against the Zoo deck. Um, could be wrong, though. And is Domain Zoo a matchup where we want AV? I think it could be, honestly. Um, beats Graveyard Hate. We can play it pretty quickly. I'm going to try it out here. It might not be good, but I'm going to try it. Um, probably want these Echo Intrudes. What to take out, though? I think I want to keep two copies of Sylvan, maybe? I just don't know. Like, is eight search effects too many? Sylvan's also the worst one because it's so costly. Does Domain Zoo... Domain Zoo probably doesn't have anything like Thalia. And they had Gigantha, so they're not running Eidolon. I'm just going to submit this. If I'm wrong and they get me with some weird permanent base card, so be it. And there's a game three. Ah, uh, Sylvan Scrying, you jerk. Gotta ship this. Alright, so we have one land... And a Lotus. We're going to keep this, but we have to draw it into a blue source. Puppetry, like, having double Puppetry is a mulligan already, so we just bottom one of those. And this hand would be completely acceptable as a, a six card. Maybe even a seven. Like, I think I might keep this on seven. And once again, the turn one hierarch for the Domain Zoo deck. We drew our land. That's pretty good. Um, I think it's better to play this one on turn one. There's no reason to play this one first. So you, all you do is take away options. So if I drew a Sylvan Scry next turn, it just limits me. With our hand, I will not be able to go off on turn three because I have no way of twiddling on turn three. So our turn three will just be Lotus Field Pass by the looks of it. All right, Ragavan. Yeah. Burr, you're in trouble. I think I'm just going to play this. Might have been too slow on the draw. Because they're about to attack for a bunch of damage. I'd be shocked if we got to untap on turn 3. Or on turn 4, I'm sorry. But once again, uh, if these were blue lands, I could splice reach and we could attempt to win on our turn 3. But because these are not duels... We're not able to do that. So it's the this is the downside of playing these lands instead of real lands. Manus Rider wasn't expecting that. Taking six here. You're gonna play Seagate Restoration? Do it. It's a good one. Our opponent could very easily have lethal next turn. Oh, I showed them my AV. That's a bummer. I didn't want to show them that. I mean, we're probably not going to win this game, and then we showed them our cyborg deck. Jeez. Maybe I should just be boarding in weathers here. That's probably what I should have been doing. But once again, what do you take out? So they're attacking for 10. They just need 4 damage here. Uh, they discarded a Tribal Flames. I like that. Abundant Harvest has occurred. They can definitely cast. They have another Tribal Flames? Yep. Alright. So they had a number of cards that killed us there because they also had the, the Tribal Pump spell. So maybe I should be boarding in these. Alright, we're just going to board out the Sylvans. We're going to get wild. We're going to board out the Past and Flames too. Why not? It's probably not a good idea. 
like I don't recommend it, but we're gonna try it out. <sighs> Game three on the play. Okay. The bounce spell is probably the reason I'm willing to keep a hand this slow, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so no turn one hierarch this game, but turn one Ragavan instead. Yep, it's pretty good for our opponent. Um, so they're gonna exile our AV here, and we still don't have access to um, Lotus. That said, we will be drawing uh, peer through depths, assuming that our opponent attacks. So what we could do is just take three and then try to find uh, Abundant Harvest off of the pier. And then we pier for Lotus. And then that means on turn four, uh, we can do something meaningful. Or I can just Perilous Voyage and Scry next turn, which could also be the play. Um, because that will allow us to play land three without lightning bolting ourselves. Okay, what's the opponent doing here? Tarmogoyf. Okay. Um, do we think that our opponent's going to deal a ton of damage? And I guess I, I don't need to shock myself or bolt myself. I can cast the depths first. Hmm. I think I want to keep the Seagate in hand. All right, so I think I'm just going to pass here. I don't know if I'm supposed to uh, Perilous Voyage and then let... So that way I, I choose whatever they exile. I'm not sure if that's how this should go. Like, Or if I should let them exile and scry. What is this? Tribal Flames? Okay. So I think I'm maybe supposed to bounce the Ragavan here. Is this the pump spell? All right, well, now I'm definitely bouncing the Termogoyf. Maybe I should have waited until they attacked. All right, so we're going to go get Lotus here. So we're at, so they can deal two. We are dead to Pump Spell. We're dead to Might of Alara Tribal Flames next turn, or Double Might, Double Tribal. Um, they have three unknowns in hand. I think I'm supposed to just like take the conservative play and pass. Definitely want the uh, the pop. All right, please do not kill me. That's what I'm asking for. So we know that they have Goyf. All right, so they do not have um, Might of Alara. There's also another Might of Alara. I think I think there's two of those effects. I could be wrong, but I think that there's two of them that exist. Uh, and then Tribal Flames. Oh, there's one Tribal Flames. Do they have another? No, okay. So now it's go time for us. Let's try down the basic stuff. Alright, Ideas Inbound, Splice. So Weather of the Storm is a reasonable pickup here, because even if we fizzle, we can just gain a ton of life and pass. Uh, I think I made a play mistake, though, on boarding out uh, the one pass in flames. Because if we do fizzle, um, what am I trying to say here? If we do fizzle, it would be better if we had a recovery method. Um, so we're at 12. I think I'm supposed to... Like, I don't think we're actually winning. Uh, what am I trying to say here? like the long way so i think what i'm supposed to do is weather ev for a bunch okay so i just need to do a little bit of math here as well so let's say i do this for green blue so you have eight mana bailiged for twiddle is minus one mana plus two storm so that i would need at least seven mana to do my line um so this works out. I could also just like Seagate right now, but then we have to hit uh, a twiddle effect. We have six of them in the deck, 
So it's not super unlikely, but it's also just like unnecessary risk. So I think instead I'm just gonna cast a twiddle here. And now we twiddle. Yes, I would like to untap. Add a bunch of green. Let's weather. And we're gonna get a win with Eevee, which is something I wanted to do this uh, league, which is kind of cool. Um, do I even want to play this? Yeah, probably. Whoops. This is a land. Boom. All these oozes. What up? Look at that. It's a beautiful sight in my opinion. Concedes to the ooze. Too strong. Too strong. How about that? We're three and one. Let's get round number five. Welcome to the final match of the night. Our opponents revealed Lurus of the Dream Den and Round the Draw, so it's a little bit risky. Uh, that said, we've opened up a Lotus Field, Slendy Vision, and a Cantrip. I'm going to try this. Uh, and here's a good example of the Sylvan Scrying being a dead card, uh, where it could have been like a Wishclaw Talisman that would get you Psychic Puppetry, something like that. All right, so Verdant Catacombs. I wonder if this is Domain Zoo, Zoo as well. Not by the looks of it. Uh, well, they're going to discard our land here. Wow, what a beating. What a beating. That's uh, certainly one disadvantage of this list that I hadn't considered up until this point. <sighs> wow. Wow. Not being on the play for the loss. <laughs> uh, yikes. Just so brutal. Yep, that's a goif. I'm going to concede. Alright, no point in battling that out. We're just too far behind. Alright, so I definitely want these veils. And I think I want the pierce as well. Sort of want to bring an AV. I know it's a lot of cards going out. So we still need three cards. Maybe I don't bring in Pierce. This is probably in this build likely just for like Chalice, Blood Moon, that sort of stuff. Maybe I'll just do two AVs. Hmm, I, it's a control deck. I could board out Psychic Puppetry. All right, let's do this instead. Against slower, uh, come slower decks in the format like control decks. I don't mind boarding out a puppetry because you don't need to find it quickly, and drawing multiple of them is fairly bad, um, at least in my experience. So I think that's okay. Uh, you could also try boarding out Perilous Voyage, but I've just been burned so much that I think that you should have one answer in your deck if possible. Remember, if you're enjoying this content, you've watched this long. We're in match number five. Open up the description. Make sure you catch all of this content. You know, while you're down there, subscribe. But follow all of our social media networks. Be a part of the combo community. It's a great place. People will help you get better with combo decks. I would highly recommend the Discord. Go like, join, subscribe, follow, etc. Okay, we're on the play for game number two. See if we can get the job done. No lands, ship. We do have lands this time. Bottom of the past in flames. Alright, so we're going to play our turn timber. And then go get our lotus. I mean, this is a cool play. Like, you can't take this away from the deck. It's just, I don't know if you need to be doing this stuff, personally. Now it's the opponent's turn. What will they do? Not surprised that the Luris deck is playing Bobble. That just makes a lot of sense. All right, Watery Grave, Bobble, what's up? You have a Thoughtseize? That was the one downside is uh, we were not holding up Veil of Summer, but I think getting Lotus is just worth it. You can't guarantee your opponent's gonna open up on 
spot seize, so we took the guaranteed play. And in fact, I do it all over again, even knowing that they had thought seize. If they're smart, I think they're supposed to take ideas inbound here. Take away our action. See if our opponent agrees. And they do. There goes ideas. Another Lotus. So I'm going to play the Seagate. And the reason why is that this game is going to go a little bit longer. So we can cast the Slundy Vision off of the Lotus Field and try to find another action spell. And I doubt that our opponent would play another discard spell into our Veil of Summer here. In fact, if they play something that I can cycle with, I might just do that. All right, so Delta, this could just be a Goyf again. They're at 12. Is this a shadow build? It might be. Do another Veil of Summer. All right. Sacrifice our two lands and pass the turn. Next turn, we're probably just passing with uh, the Veils up, and then we can cycle or cast the Vision on the end step. It might change depending on our draw, but that's at least the plan for now. This, I don't know if this is a shadow build with just like Loris or not. It seems a little off to me. And there's the shadow, so yeah. I guess my, uh, my hunch was correct. And I'm just going to pass here. Attempt to cast vision on their end step. That thought season game one was just so brutal. All right, so, and unfortunately, the life total thing just doesn't matter here. Like, we can't threaten their life total at all with our deck. So they're going to attack for seven, going to set, putting us to seven, which means that uh, we're dead on the following turn. And they're just going to pass with mana up, which means that they have interaction. So they know that we have Veil. And then three unknowns. But unfortunately for us, the three unknowns are all sort of bad. Yikes. Um, I guess our out here is our opponent trying to interact. And then we puppetry play veils. Well, they fell for it. I mean, this is such a slim out. Um, and it's not likely to work, but we should take our shot. All right, so now this resolves. We can actually buy ourselves a turn here. Uh, Bail get recovery. I don't think that those are cards that I want. And I'm going to cycle the Veil. Because we only get one turn. Ah, uh, Eevee. We needed you with more mana. Sort of a bummer. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get there. All right, the Death Shadow in an attack. Our opponent, like, I, I just don't think that we, like, our out is drawing ideas and bound into the knots. Um, so we can technically make uh, a few oozes, but it's not going to be enough to stabilize. Like, this line just doesn't win. All right, so... We get two trump blockers, but what is that realistically doing? All right, so I'm going to save ourselves uh, the opponent taking forever here, and I'm just going to concede. So let's look at the deck list again. And I mean, woohoo, we went through two. Let's look at the deck list again. Uh, Sylvan Scrying was probably the worst card in the deck. This could have been um, Slide of Hand or something else. I, I just really didn't like this. Abundant Harvest was fine. Uh, overall, I felt like the no lands thing wasn't as good as just running Wishclaw and a normal mana base, personally, at least in my opinion. That said, we did get some sweet uh, wins off of Seagate Restoration to play around, um, you know, Graveyard Hate or whatever, if our opponents had it. It was just, like, also a cool engine to play with. Like, it was just sort of sweet. Um, AV was good in one match. We sort of just got trounced in the last one, but overall, 
this card was kind of cool. Weather the Storm came up once. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought. At least this deck was fun. I really enjoyed playing it, and hopefully you enjoyed watching it. Um, yeah, see ya. Keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.